This reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. Paul's work for the Gentiles. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, pray to God. Surely you have heard that God in his grace has given me this work to do for your good. God revealed his secret plan and made it known to me. I have written briefly about this, and if you will read what I have written, you can learn about my understanding of the secret of Christ. In past times, human beings were not told this secret, but God has revealed it now by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. The secret is that by means of the gospel, the Gentiles have a part with the Jews in God's blessing. They are members of the same body and share in the promise that God made through Jesus Christ. I was made a servant of the gospel by God's special gift, which he gave me through the working of this power. I am less than the least of all God's people, yet God gave me this privilege of taking to the Gentiles the good news about the infinite riches of Christ and of making all people see how God's secret plan is to be put into effect. God, who is the creator of all things, kept his secret hidden through all the past ages in order that at the present time, by means of the church, the angelic rulers and powers in the heavenly world might learn of his wisdom in all its different forms. God did this according to his eternal purpose, which he achieved through Christ Jesus our Lord. In union with Christ and through our faith in him, we have the boldness to go into God's presence with all confidence. This is the word of the Lord. Street to hear an update on the latest restrictions. Our fight against the coronavirus is happening all across the country, in every home and in every community. Truly extraordinary efforts are underway, from care workers to thousands of volunteers, delivering essential supplies and supporting their neighbours, sharing light this Christmas. The reading today is from Matthew um, 2 verses 1 to 12 and we start with visitors from the east. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the time when Herod was king. Soon afterwards some men who studied the stars from the east of Jerusalem and asked where is the baby born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star when he came up in the east, and we came to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was very upset, and so was everyone else in Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the teachers of the law and asked them, where will the Messiah be born? 
In the town of Bethlehem in Judea, they answered. For this is what the prophet wrote. Bethlehem in the land of Judea. You are by no means the least of the leading cities of Judea. From you will come a leader who will guide people from Israel. So Herod called the visitors from the east to the secret meeting and found out from them the exact place, the time the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem with these instructions. Go, make a careful search for the child, and when you find him, let me know so that I may go and worship him. And so they left, and on their way they saw the same star they had seen in the east. When they saw it, how happy they were, what joy was theirs. It went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They went into the house, and when they saw the child and his mother Mary, they knelt down and worshipped him. They brought out their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, and presented them to him. Then they returned to their country by another road. Since God had warned them in a dream not to go back to heaven. May my words and the thoughts of all our hearts make sense in your sight, O Lord, our God and our Rescuer. Amen. There is a myth from English history that medieval King Canute was so sure of his own power that he sat on the beach and commanded the sea not to come in. In fact, the opposite is the case. He wanted to convince his courtiers that he was under God and his powers limited, so he sat on the beach, commanded the sea not to come in, and of course it did. He made his point. King Canute knew that all things are under God and the purposes of God cannot be thwarted. Christmas and Epiphany have this message at their very heart. What we see is that the tide of God's purposes keeps rolling in as the tide and waves of the sea, and they roll over you and they roll over me. This tide all leads to Bethlehem, then to Calvary and to the Easter Garden, for all things are under God and cannot be thwarted. This tide that keeps rolling in, it is the mercy of God. This mercy of God is always in motion, and like the sea, it is always rolling in, always reaching out to you, reaching out to all of us, to you and to me. When I was a boy, I would build sandcastles on the beach and defend it as best I could whilst the tide came in. Eventually, every time I would fail, the sea would lap, would smooth, and would smother my great work. And so too the tide of God's purposes keep rolling in, and his mercy rolls over you and me. Matthew knows this very well. First of all, in his first chapter, Matthew traces the mercy of God from the past. He starts with Abraham, from whom he traces the lineage of Jesus down the years. His mercy shown to Abraham, who was forgiven not because of his good life, but because of his faith in God. And the list that Matthew includes has the good, the bad and the ugly, including Ahaz, who went as far as to sacrifice his son to God. God takes the good, the bad and the ugly in our past, the things we are glad of, the things we are ashamed of, the things we'd rather forget. But all of them he weaves somehow into his wonderful plan for our lives. The tide of God's purposes keep rolling in as the tide and waves of the sea, and they roll over you and me. But not only does God's mercy rule down the years, but it rolls from the farthest east to the farthest west. On this Epiphany Sunday, we remember how the wise men came to Jesus from Asia. Jesus, the king born in Asia, and these wise men coming from the east, representing that great continent as far east as India, Taiwan and Singapore. God's mercy lasts in the rising of the sun, and it also lasts until the going down of the same. When King Herod tries to kill all the baby children, Jesus is taken by his family to Egypt, 
And so it is that the great vast continent of Africa and all that is west of Bethlehem plays its part in the wonderful mercy of God. There is nowhere you can flee God's mercy. And in whatever way you are fleeing, for we're all fleeing something, God's mercy is there for you. If you run to the farthest east or west, God's mercy is there. For the tide of God's purposes keep rolling in as the tide and waves of the sea, and they roll over you and they roll over me. There is the length of God's mercy down all the years. There is the breadth of God's mercy stretching from east to west, and there is the height of God's mercy for all of creation witnesses to it, even the stars themselves, as the star leads the wise men. The mercy of God stretches from the highest heaven and the mercy of God comes down to the lowest depths. Jesus came down to earth, became the embryo in the womb, and yet would descend even lower, descending to death itself, to rise even from the grave on the day of resurrection. However far you have fallen, you cannot have fallen as far as Christ did, who fell into the depths of the grave. And the faithful love of the Father who sought out his Son even from death seeks you out where you are, however low you are, or however low you feel. The tide of God's purposes keep rolling in as the tide and waves of the sea, and they roll over you and they roll over me. And that mercy reaches out to all peoples everywhere. It reaches to good and bad. It reaches to Abraham and to Ahaz and even King Herod. Were not the wise men agents of that mercy calling Herod to worship? How different his life might have been had he taken that opportunity for repentance. What opportunities does God's mercy giving you? Then again, the mercy reaches across social boundaries. The list of Jesus' forefathers, a list of Jews that Matthew lists, goes out of its way to include the Moabite, Ruth. And Matthew gives pride of place to the Magi, the wise men, in the reading we had. And that mercy reaches out across religious traditions. The Magi, presumably raised in the Zoroastrian tradition, their journey of faith leads them to Bethlehem. All roads lead to Bethlehem. The tide of God's purposes keep rolling in as the tide and waves of the sea, and they roll over you and they roll over me. God's mercy is complete, and it is so fully completed in the coming of Jesus that Matthew hangs loose to the strict genealogy of Jesus and tweaks it so there are 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 from David to exile, and 14 from the exile to the coming of Jesus. See Matthew 1 verse 17. 14. That's twice times seven. So we have six lots of seven, six lots of completion. And we are reminded of the six days of creation in Genesis 1. And this is a new day of creation, a new rest, as vital as the creation of the world itself, which Matthew inks in by stressing the role of David in chapter 1 verse 17. The numerical equivalent of the word David in Hebrew is 14. Jesus is new creation, new king king of creation. And so this is the breadth, the length, the height of God's mercy. But it is strong and deep as well, for God's mercy triumphs over judgment. Do we not see this in the creation of the world? God, knowing the world would fall away from his ways, nevertheless decided to create the world. He decided then to have mercy. Out of his mercy flowed the creation of the world. For the book of Revelation tells us that Christ died before the foundation of the world. And many in the world look towards the coming of God now as they did then. Look towards that as something to be feared. But God gets his word in first. Jesus came to Bethlehem as the little child. And so we know that the king who will return is the same Christ whom we meet at Bethlehem. His mercy triumphs over judgment. For even that book of judgment, that book of revelation, even that book testifies that it is the Lamb of God who reigns on the throne, the Lamb. Judgment comes from the one who is mercy and love, and it reaches out to us again and again, and only ceases, that mercy only ceases when we destroy ourselves by rejecting the hand that would deliver us. As James reminds us in chapter 2 of his letter, verse 13, Mercy triumphs over judgment.
This year, God's mercy reaches out to you from your past, from furthest east, from furthest west, from the heights of heaven, and even down into the most hidden depths of your life. The seasons of the year change, and we have summer, autumn, winter and spring, but there are no seasons to God's mercy. In heaven, it is always early autumn. His mercies are always there, ready to be harvested. The tide of God's purposes of mercy keep rolling in as the tide and waves of the sea, and they roll over you, and they roll over me. You say, I cannot see God's mercy. Then remember that Christ himself hid his divinity in the flesh of a little baby. The mercies of God may be hidden, but they are there. It was the eyes of the shepherds and the wise men who were able to see God's mercy. For God's mercy is at work in all things, past, present, future, above, below. That insult you receive, allowed by God that you may learn humility. That setback, allowed by God that you might learn dependence on him. His mercy even reached out to King Herod, the wise men and the scholars pointed him to where the true king would be born. God's mercy reached out to Pharaoh and to Herod, to you and to me. You cannot hold back the tide of God's mercy, for God's purposes cannot be thwarted. Just as Canute could not and knew he could not thwart the tide coming in, so God's mercy rolls down the years. Many years ago, I went to the church of the Nativity in Bethlehem, which marks the place where Jesus may well have been born. To go into that church, you need to steep low and go through a very low door. At the beginning of this year, let us stoop low. Let us not puff ourselves up with pride, but humbly come, stooping low, before bowing before the Christ child, the Christ on the cross the Christ of the Resurrection. For the tide of God's purposes of mercy keep rolling in as the tide and waves of the sea and they roll over you and me. And God's mercy is hemming you in on every side, is there waiting for you. Bow down and welcome it. Amen.